Welcome back to Your Healthier Way on sunny day number 27 of our 30 day raw vegan project. Today our subject is going to be sunlight. And uh, I want to get caught up first on how our days went. So Lisa, how about yours? Today's Friday, one of my cooked food days, but I noticed this morning that I was not really craving cooked foods. I was thinking about going to my favorite Mexican restaurant and getting my, my cheese and my, you know, my, uh, my chicken enchiladas. But, and I went and got it, but it's not that I was really craving it. Um, and then I had my, my coffee and my chocolates, but so that's the downside. But the upside is that I noticed that at least physiologically, I wasn't really hungry for it. So I think that the more we get that taste of salt and sugar and dairy out of our systems, the less we want it. Sure. And the more it, it quashes those parasites that are craving it. Right. That's a very good point. Um, I've noticed over the last 30 days, and I haven't talked about it much, but now that you mention it, um, I've been more successful at controlling my, uh, well, I've been successful the whole time controlling my temptations, but it's, it's easier to control them as time goes on, and I, and I grow further away from those cooked and processed foods. Um, that isn't to say it's not hard. I mean, even over the last uh, several days, um, I've probably come kind of close to, to breaking my commitment, but I haven't, um, and I'm feeling pretty good. So um, I started my day today with a, a nice, thick, and very simple smoothie that filled me up, and uh, that helped me through until lunch, actually. Excellent. I had another of the same type of smoothie, so um, I'm doing pretty good today. Awesome. Um, awesome. But good, I want, good start to the weekend. Yeah, yeah definitely. Um, but going on to our subject for today, mm -hmm. which again is sunlight, um, there's a lot of fear around exposure to the sun, and say for the last 20 years, and skin cancer has become an issue with very valid concern. Um, Lisa, can you break down for us what skin cancer actually is? Well, I think in the allopathic medical community, they'll put different labels on skin cancers. They'll say this is a melanoma or a basal cell carcinoma or a retinoma ding dong oma, whatever. Right. And they'll tell us to stay away from the sun, that if we do go in the sun to lather our bodies up with these chemicals, these sunblocks and sunscreens, and these chemicals make us sick or they can accumulate in our bodies and make us sick. So, I mean, like, that makes any sense whatsoever. Right. Mm -hmm. And then we have to remember that there are people that get skin cancers in areas of their bodies that are never exposed to the sun. So we have to question it, whether this information is, you know, how accurate it is. Yeah, mm -hmm. that, and that's a very good point. Um, but, you know, what's the real issue with skin cancer then? Well, the sun is acidic, and when our bodies are acidic, it just adds to it. And we have to look at why our bodies get acidic. So look at the foods that we eat. And not just get acidic, but get mucus congestion. And we get all of that from dairy, grains, sugar, animal proteins, heavy metals, and the chemicals that we put on or in our bodies. I mean, we're diurnal animals. Our activity is mostly occurring during the day as human beings. So there should be a symbiotic relationship between us and the sun, right? Well, that's very true. I mean, think about how our ancestors revered the sun. Mm -hmm. um, the uh, you know old time religions from Japan and Egypt, um, India, Western Africa, they looked at the sun as the creator of all things. Um, our ancestors from Persia and Greece and Rome, uh, the Americas, they looked at the sun as their patron of uh, they truth it, and they? right as the patron of truth and justice and ethics, um, and and the seer of all things. Uh, and the sun has always held a great, great deal of importance for people. Um, the 25th of December, by the Gregorian calendar, um, has always been a time uh, where, uh, you know, it's a very sacred day for most religions. And the 25th of December also, and I don't think it's coincidence, happens to be the day when the days or the sunlight is out, you know, starts to get out longer and longer for the rest of the year. Um, following the shortest days of the year, which are 21st or 22nd of December, depending where you're at in the Northern Hemisphere anyway. So um, many cultures see that as the birth of the new sun. Yeah, and what else can you tell us about the cultural view and, and our relationship with the sun? Well, I see our religions as, you know, the basis, you know, they're sort of the founding um, 
efforts on our survival. So it's the basis of our religions, I should say, are, are founded on our efforts for survival. And survival is based on food, really, when it, when it comes down to it. Um, the old, re old religions are centered on um, harvesting crops and uh, planting crops and hunting wild game. And without sun, there's no food. I mean, it doesn't matter if you're a herbivore and you're, you need uh, plants that use photosynthesis to grow. Uh, it doesn't matter if you're a carnivore that relies on an herbivore population. It doesn't matter if you're somewhere in between and you rely both on plants and animals. We all need the sun to survive. Absolutely, absolutely. And, and there's more than just photosynthesis, right, in terms of the role that the sun plays? Well, as you mentioned, we're, we're diurnal and uh, the sun keeps our mind right. Um, the best therapy for seasonal affective disorder or cabin fever is the sun. Um, the rising and the setting of the sun keeps our sleep patterns in, in sync. Um, it regulates the melatonin in our bodies. Mm -hmm. um, the sun is thought to reduce hypertension and cardiac disease. It activates mm -hmm. vitamin D synthesis in our bodies, which, of course, has numerous benefits. Well, look at the people that when we have office jobs, we're in an office environment in a building with fluorescent lighting, oftentimes no windows. Mm -hmm. And then we come home either after the sun goes down or even if the sun's still out, we'll we'll be inside in front of the TV set or our, our gadgets and games, you know, or just the opposite. I'll see people, how many times do we drive down the, the interstate and, or the road and we see people jogging and mowing the lawn right. at high noon? I mean, that that's just, you know, blatantly not healthy. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so, you know, and, uh, and kids more so now that they're not even playing outside. They stay, they stay in the house a lot more. Yeah, they got their video so, games. They got their video games. So, right. you know, so the sun is good for us in, in many ways. So where's this fear coming from that, that we've been taught to have about the sun? Well, I think somewhere along the line in the earliest 20th century, exposure to the sun was sort of a go-to cure-all for everything. And it got out of hand. I mean, we, we got too much of a good thing. And in typical fashion, we went overboard on sun exposure. And then tanned skin started to um, take on the connotation of being visu visu a visually attractive attribute. Um, and then tanning products came along and that heightened uh, how our exposure to the sun or the intensity of our exposure to the sun. Um, there was more people seeking exposure to the sun uh, between 10 o'clock in the morning and 2 o'clock in the afternoon and that's when ultraviolet B rays are, or the radiation is at, at its highest. Um, and I think whether it's a popular subject or not, we do need to take, uh, take a look at the industrial effects of uh, what has happened to our atmospheric ozone layer. Um, you know, I, I think that, you know, eventually overexposures began to affect people in a negative way. Mm -hmm. um, but now our society is actually in danger of going the opposite direction. And that's going to affect us as well. Um, we need to learn to moderate, I believe. Absolutely. Um, and, you know, the question then remains, how much is enough, I well, guess? Well, use your gut for one thing. I mean, I think moderation is the key as it is with so many things. You know, avoid the sun between 10 a.m. and 2 p.m. where those UV B, uh, B rays are the highest and the strongest. And when you go out in the sun, go out for maybe 20 minutes at a time. Don't char yourself, you know, for, for an hour. So go maybe 20 minutes early morning hours. 20 minutes late afternoon before the sun goes down and try to get try to go as naked as legally possible <laughs> try to you know consider your neighbors and all that but try to get a, a sun on as much of your skin as you possibly can and most of all avoid the harmful chemicals in your body to supposedly protect us from this you know dangerous sun it's more about what we put in and on our skin that makes us acidic and makes us more susceptible to these skin cancers. If you do want to put something on your skin to protect you from the sun, um, I would suggest going to a place like um, Environmental Working Group, EWG.org, and find out what products have the least amount of chemicals that, that will negatively impact you. So, And then when you get in, back inside the house, take those off because at the very least they do block your pores and that's how your skin breathes and eliminates is through your pores. So that's what I would say. Okay, so not too much, not too, not too little. little. Follow the middle path. It sounds a lot like Buddhism. Yes, it does. So yeah, um, sunlight Buddhism. affects our health in a lot of different ways. So give thanks to the sun, but respect the sun's power. Yes. And 
we're losing our son. Yes. So thank you for watching Your Health, Your Way. Um, tomorrow, we're going to be talking about natural pet care. Awesome. We had joy. We had fun. We went streaking in the sun. So we did. <laughs> See you tomorrow. You did it, my love, freezing your ass up like a maniac.